Hi, I'm Fritz with Argo Adventure and we have an 8x8 Frontier 650 in a 2021 model year that we're going to take a good look at today. We'll just start off with dimensions. Outside bumper to outside bumper is going to be just under 5 feet. Front bumper to rear bumper is going to be just under 10 feet for length. Uh, total weight of this vehicle, by the time you get gas and your different stuff that way in, it has a dry weight of like 1,195 pounds. So you're going to come in about 1,250 pounds as is once it's ready to go on the road. Um, we're going to start off with our lower body and we'll kind of do a walk around here. So our lower body is a high density polyethylene. And as with all the Argos, it has a very... Uh, it's a very high oil content, so it's very, very durable for running over rocks and different stuff that way. Um, this is a full length skid plate, and you'll notice it comes up about eight inches, just like all the other models. But this runs the full length of the body, and it's about a quarter inch thick. thick. So if you're hunting in areas that have a lot of stumps or, I mean, uh, rocks you wouldn't want to run over super 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 sharp stuff but for the most part it's going to be very rugged and the argos that are coming in for service and stuff this skid plate really does a wonderful job of protecting them okay so we're going to move over to uh we'll start with the tires here tires and i got a couple other things one thing i didn't point out Bearing extensions. The Frontier 8x8 650 does not have bearing extensions. So if you're looking at this vehicle and one of the things you want to do is plow snow, you can't do it on this model. So you, you need to look at a 700. The bearing extensions are not available on any of the 650 Frontiers. When we jump over to the tires, the Frontier comes standard with a 24 inch tall by 10 inch wide uh, tire that is sitting on an 8 inch steel offset rim. Speed, you're going to run, depending on the gear ratio of the transmission, you're going to run that 18 to 22 mile an hour in high range. Low range in reverse is going to be probably that 10 to 15 mile an hour and it depends on the gear ratio of the transmission and you can call the shop for details if you're shopping and want to know what what's best for you the steel offset rim i bring up the offset rim because on all the newer newer models there's a valve stem on both sides of the rim and you can actually rotate if you were going to run tracks you can take this tire flip it upside down and swap it with the one on the other side and it allows the wheel to come out about two two and a half inches uh, and if you're running tracks, it gives you the adequate clearance so you don't have any track rubbing against your body. Okay, so on the side of this vehicle, you're going to notice obviously you have four tires. That's pretty obvious. One thing that people don't notice, if you look at the front of the vehicle, you're going to notice how, of course, we got the engine in the front. It's like squatted down, and if you notice in the back, it's elevated up just a little bit and it's kind of, I don't know how good that'll show on camera, but basically all of the eight wheelers have what they call a banana frame and the front tire, or I'm sorry, front tire and rear tire are seven eighths of an inch higher than the center two tires. And they that is done so when you're running tracks or whatever the case, if you're driving around steering, most of the weight is typically on the steering for the center and it allows them to steer and turn circles a lot easier than a, just a straight conventional frame. The reason you see the back end typically off the ground if you own an eight wheeler already or you're looking at this is because the engine's in the front it kind of tips it forward. So I just wanted to explain that because we get asked that quite a bit. As we go to the back of the vehicle, um, basically we have got a two inch uh, receiver hitch, which is on all of the new models. This is the same hitch like you, your pickup would have it. Your receiver will slide in. I'm not sure if this is a 9 16 or 5 8 whatever it is for a standard pin goes through there, but that's basically what you got there. We've got two drain plugs on the back of the vehicle. Um, again, these would be, uh, if you've been watching other videos, it could get a little bit repetitious, but if you had water in your vehicle or it set out in the rain, whatever the case, you could elevate the front end of the vehicle or put it on the side of a ditch, screw these plugs out there. This is a screw out boat plug and your water will, if you have any in there, it can drain out and it works good for, 
I don't know, if you were out in a lot of dirt or you wanted to wash the vehicle, guys will put elevate the front end up about a foot and they can rinse the vehicle and all the water and stuff will run out and your debris in the back. So, and then this is just your skid plate where it, this is that same piece that runs the full length of the underbody all the way up. Something else I'll point out on this particular vehicle, um, and I should probably miss this in other videos, but you'll notice how the, the lower body is channeled up there in the center. That gives you this a little bit more ground clearance for uh, when you're in uh, areas that you could high center on. Or, and it does make a difference if you're in swampy conditions too. And I think it actually adds a little stability in the water as well. I mean, it, I don't know if there's anything documented on that, but you can feel the difference. The older machines did not have this. The tub was flat across. So that's just kind of a, a little point of interest. So on the upper body of this vehicle, we'll start in the front. You've got your two little rubber latches to open your hood. Just simply lift it up and you can lay it back and you have access to your engine compartment. Um, the 650 is a 23 horse Briggs & Stratton uh, Vanguard motor. Uh, that being said, we have a, your battery is up underneath the dash here. Your fuse panel is here. We have the classic transmission in the frontier. All the frontiers run the classic transmission. It's sitting uh, just down lower here. Uh, and I guess just from a couple points of reference, we do have an engine oil check, your transmission oil check. We have a variable speed clutch. It's a CVT clutch um, with this uh, continuous variable speed. And because it's a frontier, we do have the California uh, emissions canister here. So it is legal to, to run in the state of California. Okay, so on the inside of the vehicle, I will note I, I did take the, the bolts out for the firewall, which we'll be showing uh, the drivetrain here in a moment. But uh, if you're reading, you're gonna read about the Argos APS. It's Argos Progressive Steering. Basically, the steering on an Argo, when you turn, the handlebars go about so far either way. Basically, you're braking the right side or you're braking the left side. And when you give it the gas, the transmission with the classical spin you in a circle. Now, with the progressive steering, this has been designed by Hayes Brakes. And uh, it, it has the feel. There's kind of a spring feel there. And basically, when you're driving the vehicle, you it's just a real clean feel. It feel. You don't feel like you're driving a skid steer vehicle in a nutshell, it's kind of what it comes down to. Starting of this vehicle, you've got your normal dash, we've got its electric start, you've got a key here. It, they went to the steering more or less like the four wheelers. You pull the brake, push the little green start button when the key's on and that'll engage the starter. And uh, because it's a carbureted motor, if you are that person that's out in colder temperatures or the vehicle's been sitting a while, we do have a choke here on the dash and you will have to choke it. This vehicle is not fuel injected. So again, the Frontier 650 is not fuel injected. Um, we've got a little switch here on the dash. This is for a bilge pump. Our little gauge here lights up when you turn the key on. It's gonna give you your speed. It is going to give you your RPMs and I think your voltage. And I, I don't know, it might have a clock and stuff on there too. We have a little 12 volt uh, outlet. That's the power outlet for charging a phone or something to that effect. These little plugs here would be if you added extra accessories, say a winch or something that way, your little toggle switches are typically on the dash. Something else I want to point out on the handlebar, as with all the new Argos now, we no longer have the twist grip throttle. It is a finger throttle. So you just squeeze, squeeze the throttle when you want to give it the gas and this has went over very well. People love that. Um, the brake, we have a park brake here. So basically park on a side hill, pull the brake, or if you're trailering it, um, it's a really nice brake and being up on the dash, it's just a good location. Uh, they used to be along the side on the one side and a little clumsy getting in and out. They've got grab handles up on the front to hold on to and they've also, the Frontier 650 has them on the sides too. So passengers can be hanging on and you can actually use them to climb in and out of the vehicle too, which is kind of helpful. Um, if I look at the firewall area up here, this is where you're classic transmission where you shift it. You've got low range, high range, neutral, and reverse, and you just put it in whichever gear you wanna go. And 
I probably haven't said this in the other videos, but you do, do need to stop to shift. If you're going from low to high or rever uh, vice versa, you need to let the motor idle down and then you do, do your shifting. I'm gonna go to the seat compartment. Seat actually folds up. You have quite a bit of storage here. I mean, you can see you got room for a small cooler, some maybe a spare belt or whatever. The, little stuff that you might want to haul. There is a little bit of capability in there for that. Um, as we move to the rear, now this is where the 8x8 Frontier 650 or 8x8 in general kind of shines over the six wheelers. In most cases, you have a lot more room here. This back compartment is pretty good sized. You can actually haul, haul four people in the back of the vehicle. And to give you an example here, um, I'll, I'll climb in it just to give you an idea of what you got for room. There's plenty of room there for another person. Now, I'm about 5'11 is where I'm at, and there is room for four people. They have grab handles on the front. Uh, back guys, they do offer a handrail. We don't have it on here, obviously, but um, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good setup, and you can, for whatever you're doing, there's just a lot of room back here. I want to cover the same thing climbing into the front of the vehicle um i just want to point this out again to our tall tall customers you climb in the vehicle if i sit straight here i've got probably almost six inches to the handlebar up above my knees and i have got six to seven inches in front of my knees so i could be quite a bit taller and still be able to sit in here and the way the seats are you could comfortably fit two adults up here there's probably if you had a little guy could sit in here too but ultimately two adults is would be comfortable for in this vehicle from a serviceability standpoint we'll kind of do this a brief tear down here so you can see what you're getting into so the hood uh, you know how i just showed how them unlatch if you lift this up you can actually tap a little bit to the right that will come right off and allow us to take the hood off and that gives you access to the engine compartment when you get back to the driver compartment now we have a flat floor pan here and the firewall there will be a couple wrenches required. I've just got a half inch socket for the bolts that are in the firewall and a 3 16 Allen wrench for the little Allen bolts that are actually in the floor. And there's four of them here that you will have to take out. Now I took them out before the video, this for ease and speed of filming and stuff. So here the firewall is gonna come out. I'm gonna turn around and lift up the floor pan here and then we're gonna move to the back here for a second the frontier still has a molded floor pan in the back and there's finger holes in the back and you just lift up on this kind of twist it sideways so it don't rub against your seats and it'll come right out of there once we have the floor pans out now this gives you a, a really good picture of what you got for service. You can tell by looking at it, it's very easy to get in there and lubricate the chains to do your greasing. Um, you can just see everything very well. And I don't know if I pointed out, but this is a gas tank that is under the seat. It holds just over seven gallon of gas and that little Briggs engine does really good on fuel. So keep in mind, uh, this is a, the the way the frontier 650 comes and it it is pretty basic at this point you can add the winch the brush guard they've got track options windshields convertible tops there's a ton of accessories and stuff you can put on the vehicle and i guess what i would say if you're seriously considering one just give us a call and uh, we'll walk you through uh, set up the vehicle specifically for the way you want thank you